Our next question comes from Paul. Paul says, what is my take on covenant theology? Well, Paul, that's a question we could take this entire session to cover. So for the sake of time, uh, let me just say a couple things. First, covenant theology is a term that generally refers to people who have a view of eschatology and of Israelology and of ecclesiology, that is the church. They have a view of end times Israel and the church that are all heavily shaped by teaching that the reformers gave us in about the 16th century and beyond. Now the reformers, men like Luther and Calvin and the like, they had some very good theology in, in certain areas and they had some unfortunately poor theology in others, which is pretty much par for the course. We all have things we do well and things we don't, things we know well, things we don't. These men were no different than the rest of us in that respect. And when it came to their understanding of Israel and of the end times, the reformers had a strong streak of anti-Semitism. We see that in their writings even now. And that anti-Semitism colored their view of Scripture. It caused them to believe that God had turned his back on the Jewish people, and so God looked for another people on which to place the promises that he had previously given to Israel. So the reformers believed that the church, the New Testament believer, has now received all the things God promised to Israel. That, in effect, we are now a replacement for Israel. And so all the things God promised Israel now belong to us and not to Israel at all. And one of the outcomes of this bad thinking, of this poor theology, is a view that says the promises of a Israel back in its land, ready for the tribulation, to endure a time of judgment so that then Israel would ultimately turn back to God and then enter into the kingdom, which is what the Old Testament promises. Well, when the reformers saw those promises, they had to make sense of them in light of their new thinking, which said the church was the replacement of Israel. Well, if we are the replacement of Israel, then that must mean this is the kingdom, they claim, and that we are now past the tribulation. That happened already in A.D. 70, they say. And so the world we're living in right now is the fulfillment of the promised kingdom that God said Israel would one day have. That, my friends, is covenant theology, that you are now living in the kingdom. Friends, if this is the kingdom, it is the most disappointing promise in all the Bible. Thankfully, it's not. This is not the kingdom and far from it. And we know that because when you look at what the kingdom is said to have in it, this world is nothing like it. But covenant theology is so wedded to its historical roots with the reformers and their teaching that it finds no way to distance itself from that teaching on the idea of Israel being replaced. And so it tries to make sense of everything else it reads in the Bible from that perspective and it ties itself in knots as a result. So what do I think of covenant theology? Well, I think you already know. It's not a correct view of scripture. It leads to a lot of misconceptions and unfortunately, it's a very disappointing effect on the hope of a believer. For we are to look at these days as preparation for the kingdom, not as the fulfillment of God's promises. And that's a very important perspective. It reminds us we are to get ready for that kingdom, to be in service to Christ now so that we might be counted as worthy of more responsibility in that coming kingdom. If you think this is the kingdom, you have little reason to do anything more than coast and wait for Jesus to come back. So I think covenant theology has a lot uh, lacking, obviously. Mm -hmm.